Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Learn Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com, and today I'm going to be clarifying a lot of the misconceptions that surrounds Resolve. Because Resolve is becoming more popular, and with more people using Resolve, a lot of them are having opinions, and lots of misconceptions are floating around. So in this video, I'm going to be trying to clarify some of the misconceptions um, that I receive about Resolve a lot. So let's start. The first one says that, and I actually received an email regarding this, um, it says that the free version of Resolve can only use one core of your CPU. That is not true. Uh, DaVinci Resolve can use as many cores as it throw at it. Actually, it's, uh, it's actually very good at utilizing the cores in your system. The next misconception is that you cannot change the playback quality uh, for smooth editing and resolve. Again, that is not true. Uh, you can totally change the playback quality. Let's see how. So for example, if I'm editing this file and I just want to lower the preview quality here of the monitor in order to get a smoother playback, I can simply go to a playback proxy mode and I can choose either half resolution or quarter resolution. Nothing happened here in terms of the file. It's just that the file is being previewed at a lower resolution, which makes the whole editing process uh, easier if I'm using a lower end machine. Now notice that this does not uh, require the creation of any proxy files or rendering any files, we're simply reducing the uh, uh, preview resolution uh, of the monitor. And one of the things that also helps in this situation is the ability to click this button here, which will bypass all the color uh, effects and all the other effects for a smoother playback. So for example, if you add a lot of color effects um, and fusion effects to your uh, file, and you go to the edit tab and you're just trying to, you know, edit it and watch the original file, but all the coloring effects and all the effects you added are just making the playback slow. Instead of you going to every single effect and bypassing the effect manually, without even leaving the edit tab, I can simply click this button here uh, to bypass or apply all the coloring and uh, fusion effects with one click for the entire timeline. So clicking here, now I have a much smoother timeline if I'm facing any trouble with playback. Well, one click back here and I just reapplied all the effects. So the next misconception says that audio editing in Resolve can only be done in the Fairlight tab. Again, this is not true. In Resolve, uh, the editing page or the editing tab is a fully function in LE, standalone in LE actually. So it has all the editing, uh, audio editing capabilities you would expect from any other NLEs. So for example, just by clicking this button here, I can show the mixer, which is just a full mixer, uh, like anything you would expect in any uh, NLE. And of course, if I go to audio effects here, I have all the audio effects available for me, and I can simply drag any audio effect to any clip and start working with its properties right from within the edit page, so I don't need to visit the Fairlight tab at all, I can actually even work with keyframes. So for example, let's zoom in here, just place the play head at this particular point, open the inspector, create a keyframe here, move to this point, add another keyframe, and now I can actually work with audio keyframes right in the edit page, and look how everything is responsive here. So no, uh, audio editing can totally be done in the edit uh, tab without ever visiting the Fairlight page. The Fairlight page exists for uh, more advanced stuff, but everything you would find in any other NLE is present in, in, uh, in the edit tab in Resolve. So you don't need to visit the Fairlight to, to work with audio at all. The next two misconceptions are linked, so I'm just going to mention them uh, together. The first one says that the free version is only good for, win, uh, for beginners, but you will eventually need to upgrade to the paid version. And the other one says that the free version is only uh, available to test the software, like a trial version, but it does, it's not fully functional. Uh, both of these are not true. Uh, DaVinci Resolve is free and it's fully uh, capable. And I know a lot of filmmakers who have been using it for years, the free version, and uh, it, they're not, it's not holding anyone back. It's, you can use it as much as you want. You can totally upgrade to Resolve Studio for some of the extra features available in Studio, but you don't have to. The next misconception says that Resolve is only for super professional uh, filmmakers. 
again, not true at all. Uh, a lot of YouTubers, a lot of content creators are using Resolve all the time, and it's actually very suitable for these situations. I think this uh, misconception originates from the marketing material used by Blackmagic Design because they always have these very professional studio people, uh, you know, working professionally. It, it's just their marketing uh, uh uh, material. However, no, anyone can use uh, Resolve and it's not only for professional people. The next misconception says that it's best practice to create multiple databases in Resolve. Again, not true. You can create multiple databases if you want, but that is not required at all. I've been using the same database now for like a very long time and you can just add projects to the database, delete projects from the database. And if you're um, a beginner and the word database sounds scary, uh, it's actually not at all. It, uh, imagine if you have a folder with subfolders inside the folders and every subfolder contains some resolved projects and every subfolder maybe has two or three other subfolders and they create more projects. It's just your normal folder structure. Uh, the top folder, the, the root folder of all this, Resolve calls that a database, and it just finds all the projects and present them to you in a certain way, but it's just a simple folder structure. There's nothing to it. So um, no, you do not need to create multiple databases at all. The next misconception says that it's very hard to delete projects you don't need anymore from the database, and uh, a lot of people are asking if that can even be done. Well, that's not true. It's very simple. Let's take a look. I'll simply come to the uh, databases here by clicking this home icon. And this is another Resolve project. I can simply right click on the project, select delete, hit delete, and I just deleted the project. So that is not true at all. It's actually pretty easy to add or remove projects from the database. The next misconception says that you cannot drag files directly into Resolve. Uh, you need to use the media tab all the time. Again, that is not true. That used to be true, actually, I guess until Resolve 12, I, I, mean, I can't remember, but at, at one point that was true. However, now it's pretty simple. I can simply drag any file directly to Resolve to simply import it and add it to Resolve. It's as simple as that. The next misconception I noticed is that people usually think that uh, Resolve tabs you know, having multiple tabs in Resolve is exactly like the dynamic link in, in, in Adobe products where um, you have a dynamic link and you can simply open a composition in, in Premiere, for example. I don't think that's true, and let me tell you why. Uh, in, in Resolve, you have your the position of the playhead in the timeline. And this position of the playhead is actually synced across all the tabs. So. You might be working in uh, in Fairlight, for example, uh, or in Fusion, uh, and you want to know exactly where does this point you're working in falls in the bigger uh, project, you know, in Resolve in, in the Edit tab. You can simply open the Edit tab and you'll find that the position of the playhead is actually synced. Let's see how. So, for example, note something very important here. I'll move the playhead to this position, for example. And now notice that once I move to the Fairlight tab, the playhead is in that particular position that I chosen. However, if I move the playhead in Fairlight back to the beginning, and now I switch to the Edit tab, note that the playhead moved to the beginning also in the Edit tab. And this becomes way more important in Fusion. So, for example, uh, let's come to this particular clip. Let's choose, for example, this one here and simply open the Fusion tab. So this is Fusion. Now, let's say that I want to uh, add something at this particular point in time, for example, or add a certain text where a certain event happens in the Edit tab. Let's just move the playhead, for example, to where uh, this part of the bridge, just remember the position of this part of the bridge here. Now I'll switch back to Edit, and it's the same exact position. Now in Edit, let's move to the beginning, where we can see both uh, arches, this one and this one here. And now when I switch to Fusion, Fusion also updated the position of the playhead to be on that particular point. And once you're working with trying to sync some composition, so you have some elements in your composition and you're trying to sync them with some stuff in the edit tab, this very small detail becomes super important. Um, and whenever I try to use the, um, the Adobe Dynamic Link, because 
After Effects and Premiere are two different softwares. They do not talk to each other. I do understand that you can go back to Premiere and preview the um, your work over there, but you're gonna have to remember the position of the framing coming from After Effects. The both playheads don't sync, and once you work, once you get used to this feature. Uh, it, it becomes hard for you to, to not use it anymore. It's just, you, you get used to it. It's really nice. The next misconception, I'm not sure where this came from, but a lot of people are asking me whether Resolve is good for exporting YouTube videos. Uh, yeah, it's it's really good. There's nothing wrong with the way um, Resolve exports YouTube videos at all. The next misconception says that it's hard to zoom in into the timeline and resolve for precise edits. No, you can totally zoom in very easily. There's nothing wrong with zooming in and um, and resolve. And let's see. So for example, I have this timeline. I'll place the playhead here and let's not actually here and let's zoom in all the way. And now notice that we can edit one frame at a time. So I'm editing frame by frame. So I zoomed into the frame level and I can edit one frame at a time. So. I'm not sure where this came from, but no, uh, Resolve can totally zoom into the frame level as much as you want, and it's very easy. The next misconception says that there are no keyframes in the Edit tab. They are only in the Fusion tab. Again, that is not true at all. However, Resolve tries to hide the keyframes for you for a cleaner look, uh, but you can totally view all the keyframes and work with them. So, for example, I'll just come to this clip here. Let's zoom out a bit. And this is our clip here. I can come to this point, for example, and in the transform uh, controls here, just click here to add a new keyframe and move to this part here and add another keyframe. And now we have two keyframes. However, note that we cannot see the keyframes. Uh, Resolve is trying to keep a clean look. However, if a clip has keyframes to the bottom right, we have two icons here. The first icon to the right will show us the position of the keyframes. So this is the first keyframe we added, this is the second one. And I can simply click and move the keyframes around, changing the positioning of the keyframes. However, I can click the other icon, and now I just open the keyframe editor, which will allow me to change my keyframes dynamically in the Edit tab. And I did not have to open any new menu anywhere. These are all changes in the timeline itself. And when I'm done, I can simply click this and this to go back to my original video without being distracted by the keyframes. So in the Edit tab, you can totally work with keyframes very professionally without any problem. The next misconception says you cannot install extra plugins uh, to Resolve. The answer is Resolve accepts OFX plugins for video uh, effects. So you can simply Google OFX plugins. There's a whole universe of OFX plugins and Resolve accepts all of them. So you can extend the functionality of Resolve using one of the OFX plugins. And when it comes to audio effects, uh, Resolve accepts all uh, VST uh, plugins, which also a whole universe of plugins. So you can totally add any VST plugin to uh, Resolve, extending the function, the audio functionality uh, Resolve has using the plugins. The next misconception says that nodes take a very long time to set up. So it's very cumbers cumbersome to use um, nodes. That is actually not true at all. They don't take a long time to set up. Actually, if anything, they take less time to set up because let's take a look at the color page here. Now we have the nodes to the right and nodes are actually faster to add than normal effects because in other softwares you would have to select what effect you want to add to the clip and then simply drag the effect to every single clip uh, you want to work with. So there's actually a lot of dragging going on, on on the screen, which makes the whole process much uh, slower. However, if you look at Resolve, I can simply use Alt and S to add a new node. So this is a node, another node, 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 node. So I just added a lot of nodes with the simple click of a button. The nice thing is that every single node has all of the color effects in Resolve already added to this node. You can simply click on the node and start working with any effect you want without having to drag individual effects at all, which makes the process much, much faster, actually way faster. So for example, the first node contains all the effects. So in the same node, I have the color wheels. I can control my saturation, my contrast, and I actually have all the curves also, and I can have all the custom, other custom curves. 
if I want to control, I have the log wheels, I have everything, I have my qualifiers, and that's all in one node, which means that every time I add a node with a simple a shortcut button, I already added all the effects in Resolve, all the color effects with one click. And I can simply control all the effects and add sequential nodes as much as I like. So no, actually using nodes is much, much faster. The next question is actually, um, I received a lot of emails asking the same question that says, is Fusion as good as After Effects? And um, actually Fusion was used on, on a lot of actual blockbuster movies uh you know and it's actually used in hollywood productions so it's really really professional that's fusion after effects is a hobbyist software that is very powerful i'm not going to say anything bad about it it's very powerful it's very capable but it was not so far hasn't been used uh, a lot in Hollywood or professional film production. So usually professional films um, use fusion or similar node-based compositing environments. Now, why do a lot of people use After Effects? It's because um, we have to admit After Effects because it uses layers. It has slightly uh, uh, easier, a slightly easier learning curve because we're all using layers all the time. And because it uses layers, it's just easier for people to start using it right away. However, if you're uh, spending your time learning something new, you might as well learn something that was actually used in actual uh, Hollywood production uh, movies. That was all. Uh, if you have any other questions or things you need to clarify about Resolve, please send me an email at alex at filmsimplified.com and I'll try to make another video that answers all these questions. Um, if you like this, please visit us at filmsimplified.com where you can join one of our free courses. We have um, a free crash course for DaVinci Resolve that takes you through the basics of every tab in DaVinci Resolve. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com